Welcome everyone! This is a tutorial video to guide you in the use of Anura 3D NPM code. In this video, you will see the example entitled Rapid Drawdown in the chapter 11 of the tutorial manual. For this example, version 2022 of Anura 3D is used. In this tutorial, you will learn how to reproduce the instability of a water retaining gel structure due to a rapid reduction of the reservoir or the river level. This tutorial demonstrates the use of some new feature of this version of Anura 3D. First, the two phase formulation for unsaturated soil. Then, the application of transient hydraulic boundary conditions. And lastly, the K note procedure with user-specified soil and phreatic surfaces. Problem definition. To reproduce the rapid drawdown, we consider a 2D plane strain model, which accounts for the inner side of the section of a herb structure, considered fully homogeneous. The dimensions of the model are visible in the figure. If we consider steady state conditions of seepage in the herb structure, we can consider an initial horizontal location of the water table. It is rapidly uh, reduced to a final location at the toe of the herb structure. This rapid movement will induce an instability of the inner side, which is symbolically reproduced by the yellow curve in the slide, in the figure. The NPM simulation is articulated in two main phases. The first one is a quasi-static gravity loading preceded by the K-note procedure. The K-note has the purpose of speeding up the quasi-static gravity loading. And if you use unsaturated formulation, you need always to specify an initial phreatic surface and an initial soil surface, which are necessary to compute correctly the gradient of stresses in the soil and pressure in the liquid. The second phase of the simulation is a fully dynamic phase, where the water table is suddenly reduced to the final location by using in an appropriate manner the total hydraulic head boundary condition and failure is triggered. It should be noted that in the initial phase of the simulation, permeability is higher to um, speed up uh, um, consolidation during this phase, and also cohesion is higher to guarantee the stability of the herb structure, while during the fully dynamic phase, permeability and cohesion will be reduced um, to the actual value that we believe are characteristic of the herb structure under analysis. We can now open GID and start creating the input data. After saving the project in the folder with the desired name, we start by selecting the appropriate problem type, Anura 3D 2022. We start drawing our geometry by using the command line. And in the tutorial manual, you will find uh, reference points with the relative coordinates that you can use to um, locate uh, the lines of the model. As it is common in Anura 3D, we have to um, draw the geometry of our problem, but also account for a broader space uh, um, around it to account for potential movements that goes far outside the initial border of, in this case, our slope. I'm now um, drawing the lines that uh, actually define the border of the slope. And in this case, uh, I need also to uh, draw the initial water table. After drawing all the line, we need to define the surfaces. But as a preliminary step, I use the command geometry create intersect line to actually cut those lines um, crossed by the newly defined initial water table line. In this manner, I will be able to uh, select um, closed polylines to build the surfaces which are uh, necessary in the NPM model. Now all the surfaces are defined and we can uh, save from time to time our project and move to the uh, materials definition. 
we can go in the materials section of Anura 3D problem type, rename the material that we are considering and uh, specify the material type, which in this case will be a two phase with the suction effect. For this material type, you have to input conventional material parameters like the porosity, density of solid and liquid, bulk modulus of the liquid, liquid and so on. You will have to specify a constitutive model. In this case, we will work with a simple Mohr Coulomb. And in addition, since we are considering an unsaturated formulation, you will need to specify a soil water retention curve and relative parameters and an hydraulic conductivity curve. In this case, we will work with the constant approximation, which means that the hydraulic conductivity is equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity, uh, whatever value of saturation degree occurs. We can assign the material to the surfaces and check the correct assignment using the common draw colors. We can now move to the assignment of the material points per element. We are considering a 2D model and we assign three material points per element at the beginning of our simulation. And we can again check the correct assignment. We can now move to the specification of fixities. So we will start by defining fixities on the solid and then fixities on the liquid. And since we are in a 2D model, we have to assign the condition to lines. So we fix the horizontal direction of the two vertical sides of the model as it is now visible. Then we fix x and y direction for the bottom of the model, making it pulley fixed, and we fix the y direction of displacement for the top border of the model. Then, after checking the correct assignment, we move to the uh, fixities specification for the liquid. Again, horizontal direction fixed for the two vertical sides and vertical direction fixed for the bottom and the top of the model. And again, we check the correct assignment. Let's specify now soil surface to the aim of having a fully defined k naught procedure. We just have to select those lines that uh, define the soil surface at the beginning of the simulation, which is the interface between the atmosphere and the soil. We can now specify the initial phreatic surface, the second ingredient of the k naught procedure. In Anura 3D, there are two methodologies of specifying the initial phreatic surface. The first one is the one presented in this video, where I, um, I draw in my model, in GID, the line that represents the initial water table, and then I, uh, I am just clicking on it as I'm showing in the procedure and uh, defining it as the initial phreatic surface. The second procedure is illustrated in another video tutorial in, entitled Rainfall Infiltration, and um, basically um, refer to a methodology that needs the inclusion of a txt file with the coordinates of the phreatic surface. We can now define hydraulic boundary conditions. At this step in GID, we can only define the area of potential application of the boundary conditions. So we do the same procedure for each of the conditions that we're interested to apply in the specific model. Uh, we have to define this area in 2D or a box in 3D because those boundary nodes that will fall into that area will be subjected to the application of the condition. In the present case, we uh, define the same area with the same extension for both hydraulic head and the potential sewage phase condition under the hypothesis that below the current um, river level, which I will show you in a little bit, will be specified through an external file, we have the distribution of pressure that is uh, consequent to the application of the total head, while above the current river level, there is the potential seepage phase applied to those boundary nodes and then those boundary material points. We can check also in this case the correct application and then move on to the next uh, step. We can now uh, determine the mesh for the current problem, which is an unstructured mesh with an average size of 0.4 meter. It will be made of triangular elements. 
and uh, all the model is discretized with the same uh, mesh size, element size. We keep saving and then we can move to the uh, calculation panel. First of all, we have to uh, determine the dimension of the problem, 2D plane strain. Then we can work with NPM mixed integration, maintain calculation step data as they are, and apply gravity load either stepwise or linearwise with the condition that the multiplier is the same, uh, initial and final, and equal to 1. After that, we apply hydraulic head and potential seepage phase. We apply the convergence criteria. Uh, it means that we want that the quasi-static gravity loading procedure is actually in place and uh, we modify the maximum time steps. After that, we uh, apply the mass scaling uh, procedure with a factor of 80. We consider strain smoothing. We consider liquid pressure increment smoothing. And we can proceed with the other parameters. We have to apply the k note procedure. And in this case, with the unsaturated formulation, it is just necessary to say apply. Then um, in a variation of this problem, I will show you also uh, later on what happens if we specify an initial maximum suction at the soil surface. And then we can save uh, all our data and move in the next uh, and final step. The last step in GID is generating the Anura 3D file necessary for the following computation. It is very rapid. And um, after uh, selecting OK, we can move to the folder where we saved our project. Performing calculation in Anura 3D. In the folder where you saved your project, you find CPS, GOM and all the other files necessary to launch the simulation. You have to create a new file which allow you to specify the sequence in time of location of the river level or water level. You can create this file as a txt file and rename it with the same name of CPS and GOM. The extension it is compulsory that is HBF, hydraulic head boundary function. When you uh, fill this file, so you open it, you have to uh, report the series of time and location of the water table. So in the first column, you will report time in seconds and in the second column, the location of the water level in meter. So for us at zero time, the location is two meter corresponding to the initial water table. And we want this condition to be maintained for all the quasi-static gravity loading. We can now launch the simulation and wait that this first step is um, completed. For the purpose of this video, I speed up um, this, uh, uh, this part of uh, the tutorial just uh, to keep progressing in the next, in the following part. Of course, you can uh, open in Paraview now the result of the initial file to check that the initial gradient of stress or pressure is correct depending on your initial hypothesis. If we now move in the next phase, we need to modify uh, free files, CPS, HHBF, and GOM. In the CPS file, you will have to modify the number of load steps, putting it equal to 19, the time per load step equal to 1, and the total time uh, reset to 0. The quasi-static convergence should be uh, set to 0, so to not have quasi-static procedure anymore. We have to uh, apply material update, so select one to turn on this command and save our CPS file with these new modifications to make it actually work. Then we can move to the modification of GOM and actually modify the material parameters. So we can change the intrinsic permeability of the liquid to uh, a value equal to 6 multiply by 10 to the power minus 12 and the cohesion to 1. 
We can now mo modify the HHBF file by adding the sequence of locations of water table in time in order to reproduce the rapid reduction of the level. We save and then we can launch again the um, calculation and proceed in the fully dynamic part of the simulation. This part will take between 10 and 15 minutes. It should be um, pretty fast. Again, for the purpose of this tutorial, I uh, speed up this part of the video to be able to uh, move to the results and show you um, the results in Paraview. So let's go to Paraview and open the VTK file that we obtain from the simulation. So in terms of uh, um, mesh, quantity, scalar, vector and tensor. We can turn on mesh and scalar quantities, select liquid pressure um, as the variable under analysis, which is in uh, the unit of measure of KIPA, and plot uh, the contour. In particular, I'm showing you the distribution of liquid pressure after quasi-static gravity loading, which should be checked with respect to the initial location of the water table. We can also check the distribution of total or effective stress at the beginning of the simulation. In uh, this case, I'm showing you the uh, total vertical or Y stress uh, after the first step. After checking the results, after the first step of the simulation, we can move in the next phase where failure is expected to um, occur. So we can visualize the results in terms of displacement, which is a vector quantity. I go at the end of the simulation to be able to rescale the range of a visualization of uh, um, our quantity. And um, we can see the final um, result in terms of uh, movement that affected the uh, inner side of the slope. And now we can go back and visualize the entire process by pressing uh, play in uh, the top uh, toolbar. And you can see the development of the uh, movement and the uh, progressive instabilization of the soil mass. We can now select material points at the crest and at the toe of the slope and extract uh, the selected data in terms of scalar or vector quantities and save it in CSV format at one or more load step. So first of all, I am selecting the points of interest, as I said, at the crest and at the toe. And then I will extract the selection. And then I will save my data. The file can be saved with whatever name you like and you can save this data for one, the current, or for all the load steps. It depends on your interest in how you're going to use uh, this data. You can do the same procedure also for scalar quantities. As I said, now I'm showing you the procedure that will result in the extraction of vector uh, quantities and then uh, manipulate uh, this data uh, in the sense that you can uh, use them to uh, prepare a um, useful graph. Here you can see uh, the file that I extracted at every load step, and especially after extracting vectors, you see that uh, um, we have uh, velocity quantities, we have displacement, we will have the position, and for each one of them there are uh, the different uh, components. In this case, we are interested in uh, collecting solid displacement quantities to uh, then plot them in a graph as a function of time. As a final example, in the tutorial manual, you will find this uh, figure where you have displacement and pressure as a function of time for the two uh, selected location, crest and toe, which is particularly important to actually um, evaluate the condition of stability of the slope. I will present you now a different manner of specifying the maximum suction above the initial water table in the K-Note procedure, which is uh, implemented in Anura 3D thanks to the maximum suction threshold. 
So let's go back to the beginning of our simulation. So let's start with the situation where we have CPS1, GOM and the first HHBF. We have to modify in CPS1 um, the K-Note procedure by adding uh, a line which has the flag K-Note maximum suction and in this case we um, put a value equal to 2 KPA. So it means that the linear distribution of suction above the initial water table, which I remind you was located at 2 meters, uh, will be limited, will be capped by a maximum value equal to 2 KPA, which can be very useful when we are reproducing certain real situation scenarios that we have in mind, for example, by accounting for some monitoring uh, data in a specific site. And uh, after this uh, very uh, tiny modification, we will um, go back to uh, do all the same passages that uh, we did, that I explained you in the um, previous case. And uh, um, I'm going to show you uh, the uh, results now of this different uh, initial distribution of pressure on uh, the behavior, not only in terms of pressure, but also in terms of following uh, evolution of the uh, collapse of the failure. I open now in Paraview the results of the current case and the previous case. The previous case is on the left, the current one on the right. You can clearly see a totally different initial uh, distribution of suction in the slope, in particular, of course, above the initial water table which has an impact on the following development of failure or progress of the collapse. So now I uh, turn on the uh, vector quantity and turn off the scalar quantity to show you the results in terms of displacement in the two cases. On the right side, again, the case uh, associated to the lower initial uh, suction near the crest, which results in a final higher displacement, even if, of course, the slip surface shape is very similar, the instability is pretty similar. Let's recap the lessons learned in this video. You learn how to numerically reproduce the instability of a water retaining gel structure due to a rapid drawdown, which is the rapid reduction of the reservoir or the river level, depending on the application under analysis. Then you learn how to specify material parameters necessary to use the unsaturated material type and in particular to add a soil water retention curve and an hydraulic conductivity curve. Then you learn how to use the K-Note procedure with specification of soil and phreatic surface. The last one by drawing it and including it in the GID model. And then you learn how to deal with hydraulic head and potential seepage phase boundary conditions. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for your attention.